her mind just dropped this amplifier off. It's, uh, I believe, early 2000s. Apparently he was playing at a gig the other night. It fell off the top of his speaker cabinet. He said the amplifier went silent at that point. So we're going to dig into it and find out what's going on. So before we go too far, since I'm not seeing anything that's standing out as being obviously shorted or bad, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the power transformer from the board and we're going to power it up and just check the voltage off the transformer itself. Yeah, 379. So, power transformer's fine. So I just pulled the two main power fuses to the power amp. So it should disable the power amp itself. I'm going to verify that in a second here. And then I'm going to inject a signal to the preamp and kind of look for signal going through the preamp, check and see if we can get all the way to the power amp and kind of go from there. Hook the probe up here. should be at the output of the second stage. It'll be after going through this first tube here. Okay, so jumping forward a little bit here, my battery died on the camera, so you missed some of this, but kind of recap, started, checked the transformer, everything was fine there, went through the power supply, all the voltages were fine, but found that the high voltage supply to the power amp was not there. Turns out we had some bad fuse holders on the board, quick fix there, we got our power back. Power the preamp up, check for voltages there, everything looked fine there. Put the tubes back in, ran a signal to the preamp, got a signal all the way to the power amp. So we know that all of this worked fine. Then I tried to power up the power amplifier itself. That's where we found the problem. So I took the board out, obviously, and have gone through and checked everything out on the board. And it looks like we have six failed power transistors. Okay, so I spoke to the customer and we're going to go ahead and go through with the repair. This is actually about a week later. I had to order a few parts, like the main output transistors and some of the resistors. So we're gonna start, we're gonna take the heat sink off, then we're gonna start pulling the bad parts off the board and go from there. Okay, jumping ahead a little bit again. So I've got the power board reassembled and back into the amp now. Now the only thing that's actually wired back in is the power amplifier board itself. I've got the preamp power, everything else disconnected. So we're getting ready to do our first power on test. Now when I do this, I kind of go a little extreme with safety on it just to make sure that if there's any faults or anything I missed or maybe we got a bad part or something that it got installed that we can find that fault before it causes further damage. So in the case of this amp, I'm running the power through a variac first, then into a bulb tester, like a dim bulb tester, you know, current limiter for the power supply. Then I've got these two resistors right here that are in series with the positive and negative voltage to the power amp itself. Now the purpose of all these is just to control the voltage coming in and then limit any current flowing through the amplifier. So if there is a short, we can find it before it causes damage. So, the process we're going to use here for the initial test is to power it up at about 10 volts AC starting. We're going to look at the current flow into the amplifier and what the voltage is on the B plus rail to the power amplifier is. Give it a couple minutes, check for anything getting too hot. If everything looks okay, we'll bump the voltage up a little higher and then kind of repeat the checks and keep going until we get up to the full 120 volts. Once we get up to that point, then we'll go ahead and check voltages throughout the amplifier, make sure everything looks okay, and then we'll kind of move on from there. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So, put the voltage up to about 10 volts. And power it up.
Okay, everything still looks good. I'm gonna let this run for about 10 minutes just to make sure nothing's getting hot. And we'll go on to step two. Okay, so with that first test down, we basically verified there's no shorts, everything can take full voltages, everything looks good. So we're gonna move on to the second test. For this one, we're still gonna keep all the current limiting in place, running everything at full voltage, and I'm gonna inject a signal into the input and bring the signal level up until I get, let's say, about four volts of drop across one of these safety resistors here. Then I'm gonna check the voltage across each one of them and see if they're balanced. We're trying to see if basically if one half of the amplifier output stage is working and the other half isn't, or if they are both working correctly. Let's go ahead and check that out. Now I do have my load hooked up to the oscilloscope here, but that's just off of your screen, so you won't be able to see that. But the only thing that's changed is we've gone ahead and hooked up an 8 ohm resistive load to the circuit here, so we can go ahead and load it down when we inject the signal. Okay, turn on my function generator here, and I'm gonna inject a signal of about a thousand hertz here. As I'm actually increasing the voltages here, it is dropping our supply voltage down. But we'll hold it about there. We got four and a half volts on this one, so four and a half here. And about four volts. Nothing that says we're crazy. Four five five. Remember, the bias on this right now is basically off. So these transistors are barely conducting. But everything looks good. Go ahead and cut that signal off. So let's move on to third phase of testing. Okay, so now that we've verified that everything's working correctly, there's no shorts, we've got good output on it, we're gonna go ahead and start with the next test. So I have removed the two safety resistors from the power supply. Now we're gonna fire it up and bring our bias level up to about 50% of what it will be at the end. And then we'll let its temperature stabilize, verify operation again with another test signal. If everything looks good then and we're not getting any overheating or anything, we'll go ahead and bring the bias level all the way up plug it straight into the wall, bypassing our variac, and test it from there. Jumping forward a bit here, we did go ahead and get everything biased properly, and I'm kind of at the very end of the last test I do, which is basically crank the amp up to full power and let it run about 15 minutes. See if anything really gets hot in the amplifier, and actually it's staying pretty cool. We're putting out more than rated power. So I'm gonna call this one fixed. I'm gonna go ahead and get it put back together, give the customer a call, let them know it's ready. Thanks for watching, and remember to like and subscribe for more content like this. And if you have any questions or want to know more about what I do, you can check me out at takeguitars.com.